Hi, I'm Howard, Bob's eldest son. Most people knew him as Bob, but to me, Amanda and Daniel, he was simply Dad. lost my parents in 1993. I lost them very close together within seven weeks and a day of each other. And Bob was really extremely supportive. I was a little bit out of my tree and I was in hospital a couple of times and he visited me and he was always there to show support when, when I needed it. We've got a mortal fight I met your dad probably like more socially at Lynn's on a Friday night because Lynn had a Friday night gathering um, and that was uh, probably the first time I met Bob social people and Bob was one of them but of course Bob was a very close friend an early friend of Adrian because they lived next door to each other Adrian on Craig moved to the Isle of Wight Adrian moved to the Isle of Wight but when they were youngsters Adrian and Bob lived on the same road, virtually neighbours, on Craigwell Road. Uh, and Adrian and I were very close uh, colleagues in terms of leadership in the Scout Movement in the 401st Manchester. So um, it was a natural progression for me to, if you like, pick up his friends. And so we all got together. So I knew Bob, probably that was the first time, long time ago, probably in my uh, early 20s. Jean and Peter and us, and we were always in and out of each other's houses all the time. And your dad always used to wear a suit, you know, the way he ended up dressing. He always used to, we used to have Friday nights before everybody had kids, and he used to come to our house on a Friday night. And he always wore a suit. I then spent the next few years getting used to this sports crazy untamed, laid-back father of three, with his unusual creased, ill-matched clothes and strange hats, who loved to dance and socialise and talk. I had a, um, a Wendy house in the garden and Howard used to love playing with the doll's pram. <laughs> I did with Bob, but Bob introduced me to one of the things was badminton. So he got me into badminton on a Tuesday night at Camp Street. So he introduced me, he got me into badminton, that was fantastic. So a big tick for Bob for doing that. And Bob used to go on walks with me, and I used to lead walks as well in those days, quite good walks, mountain walks and so on, long distance walks. And um, Bob would quite regularly come on the walk, and while I'm running, um, deciding which way to go, because I knew the route, he, he would say, it, on more than one occasion, um, well I'd just like to, Vince, I'd just like to go up that hill. I said, we're not going up that hill, Bob. He said, but I'd like to go up that hill. <laughs> But your dad was very good. We had two tents, me and my kids, him and his kids. And then the ones, he came out of the tent and he had striped trousers going this way and a striped shirt going this way. <laughs> and I said, I'm not going out with you looking like that. There is just no way I can go out with you. So he went back and he put on a shirt with just stripes on the sleeve. So I said, that's what I have to do. But there was a eureka moment sometime after that. And I said to him, you're supposed to wear a plain top and patterned trousers or a patent top and plain trousers. 
And he didn't know that. He didn't know that. And after that, that's what he did. Yes. The families, that included Dennis and Val and uh, Marilyn and me and Bob and uh, who, who was Bob and Joe? Would have been Bob and Joe. And then we all went to Turkey to see the total eclipse. We had, we'd hired a vehicle, a minibus, and we were all in it and Bob's driving and uh, it's a hundred mile journey yeah. to where the place was so we were prepared for that and Bob's foot got foots down, he's bobbing along, the road's quite good and I heard Joe saying to Bob, you're going too fast, you know, and there are signs on the side of the road that say radar, is, there's radar ahead and the monitoring speed. Bob never batted an eyelid and carried on with his foot down on the accelerator, going at whatever speed it was, 75, I think there was a lower speed limit. And then some cars at the side of the road, a policeman pulls out and waves us down, he's been He's been detected by the radar. He's pulled over and he's told, you've just been going too fast and we're going to fire you. So they took the details, he got the details. He had to, somehow he'd have to pay for it. And Joe was saying, well, I did tell you. We did, we did tell you, Bob. We did tell you a number of times. The signs there saying, radar, slow down. Okay, right. Do you think he slowed down? No. When we back took on the up, pedal. Back on the pedal. It was back up at the same speed <laughs> and it made no difference whatsoever. <laughs> and we were all, we're all, well, what can I say? It was sort of... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going under it this time I feel there's no one to save me This all or nothing really got a way of driving me crazy Somebody to heal, somebody yeah, he used to run off up a hill or somewhere yeah. Yeah. and disappear. Yes. On one wall, there was me, Bob, Neil, Dennis and Val. Uh, Kettlewell it was. And it was a, a bright blue sky and there was snow. Bob goes running off into this white house, we couldn't see him. And I said to Neil, you stay there, you stay there, there's no way you're leaving me. And then Bob came down and he fell, he fell over a side and we grabbed him back up again. I'm going under and this time I feel there's no one to turn to. This all or nothing way of loving got me sleeping without you. And then one of his, uh, I think it was Helen, one of his girlfriends, knew that I was a speech therapist and, and she came over and said, do you think you can help Bob? Your dad, your dad was great and you know, he listened to everything that I said and we did these exercises and um, within the month, his voice had changed. Did you ever leave? take them out. He took Darren out. I don't remember to, taking Tony or Dale out. And he's saying to Darren, turn left, turn left, turn left. And um, you're going the wrong way. And Darren said, I turned left. But your dad didn't know right from left. He meant right. Yeah. <laughs> when you get what you want, but not what you need. It yeah. was something we always look forward to. Bob's boat trip. And it just grew and grew, so it was yeah. one one boat full and then it became two boat fulls yeah, one, of people. Yeah, yeah. And that was uh, an annual event. Of course it, it, it was, was always sunny. But it was, it, was sunny. it was preceded by games in the park. Yes. Yeah. All your family, you know, you, you and everybody I, and our I, lot. I, I, we all used to go there. Set and Neil. Load of games yeah. and we used to have a good time. Yeah. He uh, was often organising us to, to go for walks and lo loads of families would gather together in one particular spot but there was, a, there was a stream of people and I know Lynn was there and definitely Darren and Dale, I don't know if Tony came and mm. Dennis and Val and James and Simon were there 
and the, and I think maybe Jean Black. I don't know if you remember Jean, Jean Black. Black. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And her and her Adam. family. And they just seem Jason. to be Jason. Jason, Jason and Madam. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they just, <laughs> just seem to be loads and loads of people. I, I can I can just visualise it, and our three kids were there as well. Yeah. And um, this was going to be a picnic, and it was oh. going to it was going to be it was going to be hot dogs. Yeah. So uh, I remember this. Yeah. So you, your dad organised the whole thing. Yeah. And whilst we were on our walks, our walking to whatever destination we were going, yeah. people would be calling out, Bob, Bob, you have remembered the Savaloys, haven't you? Yes, 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 yes. And then somebody else would call out, Bob, Bob, you have remembered the buns haven't you yes 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 and then a few minutes later tomato ketchup i've got the tomato ketchup yes 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 what about the water yes i've got the water don't worry i have got everything so we get to the spot he puts the primer stove up gets the water there's no container to put the water into to, to heat up the water, no, to heat up the hot no dogs. Billy can. <laughs> no Billy can. Um, oh, so, um. so we have the dry buns. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, matches, yes, 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 I've got the matches. Don't worry, I've got yeah, everything. Yeah. No. But well, we loved him very, very yeah. much. Yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. And it was Dale's first word was Bob. I told you that one, didn't I? My, Bob was always at my house yeah. after I was divorced because Dale, yeah. we split up when Dale was six months old, six, six seven months. Yeah. So he used to come round all the time. And then he was at the front door one day, and Dale's uh, however, 10, 11 months. And he said, Bob. I said, what? He said, Bob. I said, you've not said mummy yet. And he said, Bob. I was so annoyed. <laughs> so annoyed with him, yeah. <laughs> Is I have just found Bob the easiest person to get on with. There was never, I never had a crossword. If there was uh, something he had an opinion about, he stuck to his opinion. I used to, you know, make him put in rows into whatever it was. But it was always amicable and very, it's so easy to talk to. Hello, everyone. I'm Amanda, Bob's daughter, and I just wanted to pay tribute to my dad, who was the best dad in the whole world. I've had such wonderful memories, mm. being with him, not with other people, but just together. Yeah. And we never stopped talking, he never stopped talking, even on the phone. The phone would last, the call on the phone could last an hour, and the, it, never, it never stopped. He always had something to talk about and it would be, it would be a lot of empathy. So it just, it was never one-sided and it, it was great. And, it, and that, that is something I always remember about Bob, the ease with which you could have a chat. Always, no problem at all. Go on for hours. When accompanying him, walking here in Burrs, surrounded by the beauty and when I've had the opportunity whilst dodging the coronavirus to film him and lovingly put him on YouTube for now the world to see what a great man he was to me. said mm. that that his character mm. but a lovable character oh very much lovable mm. <laughs> and um i miss him very much